Hi DIYers, this is Michael from AlarmGrid, and today I'm going to be showing you how to enroll the Honeywell 6PIR motion detection sensor with the Honeywell Lyric controller. The Honeywell 6PIR, uh, like I said, it's a motion detection sensor. It uh, looks for changes in infrared energy, um, that is movement. Um, it's active uh, usually when the system's armed away. Uh, you'll have it set as an interior sensor, so that way if you have it set to arm stay, then you, you'll be able to fault this motion sensor and move around the building without worrying about um, it being faulted and causing an alarm on the system. But if the sensor detects activity, detects movement, while the system's um, ar armed away, then it'll cause an alarm on the system. And that's assuming that you use the interior follow or response type, which I'll get into that in a little bit. Um, you can also choose a perimeter response type, which would have it uh, trigger an alarm whether the system's armed stay or armed away. Uh, so that's an option as well. We'll show you that in programming, but just wanted to talk about that a little bit. Um, uh, you do see uh, the serial number uh, on the sensor right there. Um, it's on a sticker on the sensor. I'm showing you it on the back here. Um, so you'll see that when um, it gets enrolled with the system. Um, just something to point out there. Um, the optimal mounting height for the sensor is seven and a half feet. Um, that, that's a, you know, we usually recommend between six and eight feet, but um, the best height possible, if you can do uh, seven feet, uh, six inches, seven and a half feet, that's ideal. Uh, this sensor does offer pet immunity for small animals weighing up to 80 pounds. Um, uh, the way it works is um, a dog or a cat uh, moving low to the ground won't be detected by the sensor when you have it mounted properly. Um, it's very important to mount a motion sensor properly away from um, moving air or windows um, where, um, especially hot air, uh, where, where a false alarm can be triggered. Um, so you want to keep that in mind. Uh, just uh, make sure you mount this sensor properly to avoid false alarms. Uh, motion sensors are prone to false alarms, so be very careful about that. But um, enough rattling about the sensor. Um, let's get um, on with the video. Um, let's get on sh uh, programming the 6PR to the, the Lyric controller. So the, uh, the Lyric has um, a six programming mode where you can um, auto enroll six series sensors like this. And uh, like I said, the six series sensors are for the Lyric system only. So if you have a different system, uh, you won't be using the 6PIR. So we're at the main screen of the Lyric here. We're gonna choose tools. And then we're gonna, we're gonna enter in our installer code, which ours is at the default of 4112. We're going to choose program, and uh, we're going to choose six programming. But before I do that, um, I, I do want to open up the sensor, and I'm going to show you the LED light inside, um, the enrollment LED. And I'm going to show you what it looks like before you enroll the sensor and after you enroll the sensor. This is different than the red LED um, walk test light on, on the front of it. Um, it's the green LED inside the sensor. So to open up the sensor, uh, you'll see a little tab, a button that you press um, on the top of it. And we're going to press that down, and then we can just slide it off, just like so. There we go. We've opened up the sensor, and uh, to enroll, we're gonna um, we're gonna click the six programming button, and then we're gonna power on the sensor. Uh, first, you see the green LED when it's uh, not enrolled. Um, well, uh, it is there. There it is, um, right there. So notice the green LED light. Um, okay, so now we're gonna put it into six programming mode, and the Lyric's now listening for a new sensor. And uh, the way that these sensors enroll, um, you, you power them on, or you can activate the tamper switch. In our case, we're gonna take out the battery and then in reinsert it. If you're using the sensor for the first time, then uh, you might have a battery tab that you can pull, which would be pretty easy. And by the way, this is a CR123A battery, which is also known as a camera battery. Um, so we're just going to wait for that to enroll. It can take up to 30 seconds, so just be a bit patient. Okay, um, our 6PIR appeared on the screen, and we're going to begin editing it now. Um, I'm going to put this down, and um, we'll take a look at the LED after I finish programming everything. Um, okay, so we're at the, the screen here. Uh, we made sure to highlight it um, so that way it was blue, and then we pressed the edit button. And that's how we got to the screen where we can configure the settings here. Uh, like I was talking about earlier, the response type, that's going to determine how the system responds when the sensor is faulted. The most common option, like I said, is interior follower. So that way the sensor will be automatically bypassed when the system is in, is in its armed stay mode. So you can move about the building, someone's still inside the building. Um, but when you arm away, nobody should be inside the building. And if this sensor detects movement, then it will, it will trigger an immediate uh, alarm. Um, and so that, that's what most people do. Uh, there are other response types here. There's perimeter that I talked about earlier. And then you have some other options as well. Um, interior with delay is kind of an interesting one. When the sensor detects movement, it will trigger an entry delay rather than an immediate alarm. So you have the potential to uh, disarm if you caused um, accidental activation. So that's an option too. But uh, we're going to go with interior follower here. Um, 
you can have a chime on your motion detection sensor if you want. Um, the system will make um, a, a noise. It'll emit a sound uh, when the sensor is faulted just to let you know that, hey, there's movement. Um, but we're going to keep ours disabled. Um, the descriptions, they're used to name the sensor. So uh, choose a name that will help you remember it, such as bedroom motion or living room uh, detector, something like whatever you want to use, wherever the sensor will be. Uh, we'll just call ours uh, motion. Um, just put in a few letters, and then it should come up motion. And then we'll click Save in the bottom right. And so we have it set as, as motion. And uh, we have a few uh, toggle options down here. Uh, the first one's alarm report. And that's going to determine uh, if this uh, zone causes an alarm on the system with this enabled, then uh, it'll forward the signal to AlarmNet, assuming the system's monitored. You have to have monitoring service. And then AlarmNet can forward it to uh, Total Connect 2.0, so you can get a, an, a, an alert on your um, through text or email. Um, and or it can also send it to a central monitoring station. Uh, the monitoring station, uh, highly trained dispatchers, I can send out emergency services in the event of a break-in. Um, it'll depend on your monitoring plan whether you get text and, and or email alerts, or you get or you can get you can have both, um, or it gets sent to the central station. So uh, make sure you choose a monitoring plan that fits your needs. Um, supervision that's going to have the sensor um, check in with the system periodically, and the system will be expecting it um, on a regular basis um, that you can set. Um, and if if the system doesn't receive a check in signal, then you'll get an RF supervision loss trouble. Uh, usually, RF supervision loss is due to uh, the sensor being powered down. Someone removed the battery or it being out of range. Uh, this sensor has a range of roughly uh, 300 nominal feet. Remember that uh, thick walls and large metal objects can disrupt the range. So uh, make sure you have the sensor within range. Um, since we auto enrolled right now, we're, well, we're obviously in range. We're right by the system. But um, do some testing. Make sure to put your system on test mode first, and make sure your sensor is in range. That's, that's important. Um, you have an arm night mode right here. Um, so if you uh, have this option chosen, then uh, when, when you do arm night, you can still have this sensor to be active, as in not automatically bypassed. Um, so if you have maybe the motion sensor in the basement, and you're, you've armed night, and nobody really goes in the basement at night, all the bedrooms are upstairs, then that could be an option. So consider the arm night option. And then we have the pet immunity down here that I talked about. Um, We'll, we'll, we'll turn on pet immunity just to show uh, what it looks like when something's toggled on. When it's on, it's green. Uh, we have arm night off, um, but we have pet immunity on. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll enable that. And you can see it's going to check in with supervision uh, one, once an hour. So uh, we have our settings good. Uh, we're going to click Save in the bottom right corner to finish. And then I want to show you that it did add it to the zone. Um, we're going to press the return arrow in the upper right corner. We're going to press Up, and we're going to go to Zones. And then you see we have our motion sensor right there at Zone 3. Okay, um, and now I do want to show you the LED light. Um, you see that it's uh, blinking a little bit of slower green now, um, um, just so you can see it um, after it's been enrolled with the system. And then, the, so the last thing to do, well, what, the second to last thing to do, is to uh, close the sensor. And we, we have it here, and we're just going to put it uh, back on, on the tab there, line it up, and then just close it into place. It's nice and secured. If we want to reopen it again, we can uh, press the tab and then slide it off. So that's how you close the sensor. And now all we have to do is return to the home screen by pressing the return arrow in the upper right corner just a couple times, or three times. And there, we're back at the main screen. And um, our motion sensor is faulted right now because I'm holding it. So we'll go and put that aside over there. So that's how you enroll a Honeywell 6 PIR with a Honeywell Lyric controller. If you have any questions about the Honeywell 6 PIR or the Honeywell Lyric alarm system, send an email to support at alarmgrid.com. If you found this video helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up below to like the video. And remember to subscribe to our channel for updates on future videos. We hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you.